Live from Portland, Oregon, it's time for A Different View with women's perspectives on the fight to end prohibition again with Portland Dispensary's examiner and mother of four, Jennifer Alexander, and professional health care provider, Iva Cunningham, from Alternative Medical Choices, Inc. Now, here's a different view. Welcome to A Different View. This is 2013, our first show yeah, of this new it? year. Can you believe it's 2013? I can't, and the world didn't end, so everybody's happy. <laughs> um, tonight's show, we're going to be talking to Erin um, Purchase, Brave Michaela's mm -hmm. mother, and that's the seven-year-old child here in Oregon. Yeah, what a story that is. Yeah, so we're going to talk to her imagine. a little bit about what it's like, you know, just dealing with the publicity of that issue as well as the illness. And, and uh, Yeah, and I, I imagine they're, they're, they've you know, been pretty overwhelmed yes. by the response, both in the community and outside the community. And, and I and I, I expect that we're going to hear a little bit of the pro and con perspective, you know, mm -hmm. from dealing with this experience, because I think there's a lot of surprisingly positive responses, but there's mm -hmm. also some shockingly negative responses when, you, when you're dealing with such a controversial topic. So yeah. we're just going to talk to Aaron a little bit about what it's been like, you know, being so public with this. I'm not really too shocked. I, I I mean, but I think that um, after talking to Aaron and um, is it her husband, fiance Brandon, Brandon, yes, um, um, they're very well spoken and they're very well educated about the subject matter. Yeah, and I like that they um, they have a, a good sense of confidence and assurance in what they're doing. Um, so I I I feel like I. I you know, you always worry about who's going to be representing. Cause I think that they're definitely in a good position. I think to so be. too. I think they've done a good job handling all that. I don't know that I could handle all the stress and the pressure that they're under. Right, right. You know, it's it's definitely a lot of stress. So we'll talk to her a little bit about you know what that's been like since they've been pretty public for the last couple of months and mm -hmm. probably getting a little bit more settled into the publicity. Or exhausted. <laughs> I, I one of the two, right? Yeah, maybe a little both. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about um, the Montana Cannabis uh, Collective. They're, they were shut down. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was like March of last year. It's been quite a while now, but they've all been to trial or pled out um, right. with the exception of Chris Williams, whose sentencing will be in early February. And we're going to talk a little bit about the discrepancies. And there's four of them that were sentenced Different related sentences, to that. And how, yeah. mm -hmm. how, how, how they were sentenced differently well, for the same Well, I hope acts. we have some time to, to segue into the, the young man who died in uh, Snohomish County. Um, for a marijuana offense. Uh, yeah. I don't even think that's what it was in there for, but we'll talk more about that. And right, right, right. Just the, the, the way that people are affected by these low-level crimes mm -hmm. for, for the rest of their lives, tra tragically in some cases. Right. Him and Richard Floor being mm -hmm. one of the Montana... And the death sentence should never be on the table when we're talking about marijuana. Right, right. So we'll talk about that a little bit at the end. Um, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come right back. All right, You're Yay. listening to A Different View. <laughs> Georgia, Georgia, the whole day through rain. Just an old sweet song, geez. Georgia on my mind. You're listening to A Different View on 420radio.org. Georgia, 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 a song of yours. Sweet and clear. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that recognizes our natural rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search and seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak to my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com. I've quit drinking whiskey, beer, and wine. Cause I just can't take a chance on getting a seventh DUI Spending six months in a county jail It makes a man realize When mixing Crown Merlot and Miller Lite 
you really shouldn't drive So I've quit drinking whiskey, beer and wine Well, it's a hard life when you're living sober But at least I don't worry when I'm getting pulled over It's a hard life, prison life is frustrating If you're on the wrong side of anal penetration It's a hard, hard life And now we're back with A Different View Welcome back, everybody. Tuesday night, late at night. Um, eight, what time is it? Eight o'clock Pacific time. Yes. And lots of changes. Um, first of all, we're on 420radio.org. Uh, radio. Yes. So I should know this. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to get to our website, you can type in a different view.us. Mm-hmm. And it'll take you right to our website. Um, lots of changes, lots and lots of changes. Yeah, on our website, we're going to have a, um, a blog format, which mm-hmm. means you can go watch our shows through the blog. And each show will be linked with some um, footers, basically, who was on the show, mm-hmm. links to their web space, you know, so that you can check them out, learn more. Just a general overview of each show. Well, and it's also linked to our Twitter and our Facebook, correct? Yes. It yes. should be, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, you yes, got links is. right there at the top for the Twitter, the Facebook, and your YouTube uh, page. All the videos of your episodes on the right, all your blog posts on the left. As you guys can tell, Russ is the one who formatted this, so we're learning about it yet, but it's awesome. It's, it's going to be great. And we're going to also do a little bit of blogging, you know, to go a little more in-depth. Um, sometimes we get to talking about these issues, and, you know, we've got 10 to 12 minutes to, mm-hmm. to discuss an issue unless we devote even more time to it, well, but we never get through it all. So there's no. other things that we can put in the blog to sort of help listeners explore the story a little right. further. And I always think like some of some of our, our best conversations happen during the break and then when we get on air we're like, uh, what did we just say? Was <laughs> I had a good point and you know, and maybe we can use some of those to, to you know to put on that blog too. Just oh, I thought about this point too. I didn't bring that up in the show. Oh, right, right. Time. And and sometimes there's just not time to take a topic the direction that we want to take it. But there's right. there's a lot of things to explore here. So we're gonna be doing a lot more, you know, blogging where people can follow along and, and get involved and there's also you know the comment features which is great because that uh-huh. sort of engages the audience where there's they can, can well. talk with us and yeah them. discussion forums mm-hmm. and on the same um, website uh, you can access our other shows as well I'm not sure exactly where those are placed on the page but but they're there where, where you can access Russ's show uh, the Russ Belleville show uh, Irie Hour I believe is on mm-hmm. there uh, there's there's a whole slew of them Russ if you want to rattle them off real Red quick. Eyes Reggae Flashback Big Daddy Finks Funky Roller Rink Herb Thrasher Flower Hour The New Vibe per hour daily toker tunes and toker talk radio all available at 420radio.org you forgot the libra lounge and the libra lounge yes our first our first non rolla j produced show that's on the new 420radio.org network libra lounge out of iowa Excellent. and that's another show from a woman's perspective too i believe she has her husband on yeah lively libra and her and her husband mm-hmm. mr libra and what's nice about the show is they're both long term uh, public educators he's a history educator she's a language educator and so right. they bring those perspectives as well if, from from a more prohibitionist standpoint too than a lot of these other states a lot of us we, we sort of get comfortable with our yeah. almost legal status and then you go back to one of these other states and wow so so the the, the great thing about you know having a show from Iowa is is that that you're reintroduced to maybe what you've forgotten <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and there's there's a lot of, of differences it's it's well and I think if you're living in Iowa I can't imagine that you would have the resources that we have and if you know, if you're a cannabis consumer, I would imagine it'd be hard to dif- it would be difficult to network, right? If or, you will, or to find a community that you can have that same, you know, um, conversation with and feel comfortable about it. Well, and the other thing that I think is lovely about the Libra Hour is that um, it sort of relates an audience that we often neglect, which is the average person using marijuana throughout most of the country. You know, kind of hiding, not not right. wanting their employers to know, their families to know, etc. And and Libra has come out pretty publicly, you know, for for living in such an environment, and that's inspiring to other people. And well, I think that, that helps she us. she was kind of forced <laughs> out, wasn't she, in a, in a not so pleasant way, which I hate. Seeing. We'll have to bring her on one yeah, time because she's should. got some really good stories, I think, and some really good experience coming from Indiana. I can really relate. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll bring Libra Idaho, on definitely one should day. Have Libra on for sure. We're if gonna... you're from an I state, you ought to watch out when you're smoking pot. Yes, <laughs> yes exactly. And there's there's <laughs> a lot of I states. <laughs> If there's then, an I in the name of your state, you should just watch it out. No, it's true, though. It is true. I, I grew up in an I state and, and lived next door to another Oregon, I state. Oregon, Washington, 
Colorado. Don't have eyes in their knees. <laughs> so anyway, we're, we're, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to speak to Brave Michaela's mom, Erin yes. Purchase, and, and talk a little bit about life with a medical marijuana child. <laughs> patient. Right. You're listening to A Different View. We'll be right back. Energy tends to dissipate. This volcano is about to blow. It might trigger a new ice age. Where the ash will land, I just don't know. I'm putting wings on a monster. I'm Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger. At TGAgenetics.com, we are working on the leading edge of medical strains. Our strains are rigorously tested for THC, CBD, THCV, and other critical cannabinoids. Know your grow. Check out our genetic diversity at TGAgenetics.com. The home of Jelly Bean, Jack the Ripper, Vortex, and other award-winning cannabis strains. Big Daddy Thinks. Oh yeah, this is Big Daddy, and I'll be your freakazoid every Thursday night, right here at the Funky Roller Rink. Mm. 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific, only on RadicalRuss.com. Now we're back with A Different View. Welcome back. This is Jennifer and Iva here with A Different View. Uh, so we have Aaron and Brave Michaela joining us from Skype. Are you guys there? Hi. Can you hear us? Yes, we, we can. can. Hello. Great. Thanks for having us. Thanks for staying up late, Michaela, to talk with us. How are you doing? Good. 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 I love your hat, by the way. Yeah, we were checking out your hat that is adorable <laughs> Are those... I got it for Christmas you got it for Christmas ah, awesome I uh, wish Santa had brought me something that cool <laughs> <laughs> so Aaron how are you doing how are you holding up you you were just recently on the Ricky Lake show um, tell yeah. us a little bit about that experience being on the Ricky Lake show was awesome it was great to be able to speak for the cannabis nation in the mainstream news and tell them how it helps us because ultimately that's the word that we need to get out there so that people can know that there is something out there that can benefit them and help them through all sorts of different illnesses. So it was a great experience all the way around and I'm excited for the show to air and for everyone to see it. When does it air? Can you tell us that date? It airs on January 10th, and you can go to the Ricky Lake website to see where what what station it airs and what time in your area, because it varies on where what area you live in around the country. And is that website? Is it just RickyLake.com? Do you? Know I that? believe it's the RickyLakeShow.com. RickyLakeShow.com. Okay, we'll we'll get that up in our blog later tonight, hopefully. Um, you said January 10th. Yeah, January 10th. So January 10th, Ricky Lake Show. Um, Perfect. So you've, you've been doing 
quite a bit of uh, press lately. And um, I know that you you and I have had a couple of conversations about, um, you know, certain um, doctors, we will say, um, that you've turned down. Have you reconsidered um, uh, interviewing with some of those indip- individuals? Not at this time. Yeah. Our guys are really busy with treatment and doctors and appointments. Mm-hmm. Kayla's immune system is still pretty low from health therapy, so this moment in time, we have just stuck to basically magazines and some radio shows and things we can do at home a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, uh, Aaron, this is uh, Russ Velda here in the studio. I understand that uh, you're working with Cheryl Schumann, uh, one of our friends. I wonder if you could tell us how you hooked up with Cheryl. Yeah, I met Cheryl through the Phoenix Tears Foundation. Dr. Janet Sweeney connected me with her to help us deal with the media because there has been quite a large media um, need. Or people have been contacting us quite a bit, and she's experienced in that. And she's just become a dear friend to our family. She's taken us in and just basically she calls us her second family now and she's really supportive and helps us we talk to her every single day she just loves Michaela and it's awesome yeah she's really good with the media from what I've seen so that, that, that's a good she connection it great I don't have to deal with it so <laughs> no, well, that's time, nice because much time for it. right exactly you have a lot already on your plate you don't need to add that stress to it plus you know trying to figure out what their angle of the story is going to be you know you and I you've ha- you and I had a conversation that um, that uh, that uh, struck me um, and I, I I, I love to tell people this story because we were talking about how um, Michaela didn't, um, um, it was what, eight days, ten days before you had introduced cannabis to her treatment um, yeah. regimen. And, and people are still expecting that hard luck story, like she must have suffered through all the other medication. Um, and, and what you had said to me was you were grateful that you never had to do that. Have you, have, have you still had people um, expecting that, that sort of story, like your your you sh- your child should have suffered more before you had gone to cannabis? Have you still had that yeah. kind of uh, attitude? When we do receive criticism, which isn't a whole lot, but that's one of the major things we hear is that Michaela's not terminally ill, that she is not sick enough to deserve or you know need to use medical cannabis, where that's just not the case because medical cannabis is for many, many different ailments and leukemia is very, very hard on the body and Michaela undergoes a lot. So that is one of the common criticisms. No, let me, let me clarify something here only because it's like a presumption that's just sort of built into that statement. If Michaela was not getting chemotherapy, what what are the chances of recovery? Like if you weren't getting treatment at all, if it was untreated? If leukemia was untreated, it's fatal within weeks of becoming ill. The, so the thing she, that, that amazes acute, me is that people presume that it's... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, I believe, is um, about 8 to 12 weeks from the time you get, you get ill, it can be fatal. And the thing that I was going to say that amazes me is that people just take it for granted that chemotherapy is is a panacea. It, it, cancer, well, yeah. not just a panacea. It's it's mandatory, required, and and just a part of your reality. That that's I mean, and it's granted, only, it, it improves treatment. your survival rate and everything. Right. But we just we just accept this as, as a the part only of the option of available for treatment. Yeah, and and that's and it's frustrating. Um, when when people don't explore other options because diet has a lot to to do with that as I, I'm sure you've you've investigated yeah. a lot of diet there's all kinds of things that um, we can do along with uh, other other regimens that can actually actually have a positive outcome as well um, it, it's unfortunate that the attitude is that she's she's not deserving enough or she hasn't suffered enough and 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 I always kind of go back to the like why would you want my child to suffer right. Exactly. You know, why should she go through that? Why should she go through all of that when there's something that will effectively treat her symptoms? I, I just think it's such an oversight to say that, that it's not like she's terminal. 
like well, this is a pretty serious illness, and and Michaela, I gotta tell you, you're one brave. You are really one, one brave, brave little kicking. girl. I, I have four boys, and they get the sniffles and colds and and suffer. Let me tell you. <laughs> so you are one brave little girl. I really, you've been through a lot for as young as you are. <laughs> Thank so, you. So, so Michaela, I, I have a question for you. So, um, so how have have you had a lot of uh. uh you know, supports from your friends and, um, you know, yeah. do they ask you a lot of questions about cannabis or do they just like you ask you a lot of questions about your illness? Both. Both. Are you, are your friends ever confused about it? Do they have trouble understanding or is it pretty easy for them to understand that cannabis is medicine? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. It's okay. It's okay. I was just curious if a lot of your friends thought it was weird. Some of our friends are very accepting of cannabis as medicine, and some of them we don't talk to about cannabis to them. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so how much longer uh, does uh, Michaela have to go through treatment? Where is she at in her uh, uh, her treatment as far as, like, uh, chemo? Well, leukemia is a very long treatment process. It's about in between two and a half to three years. And oh. we're just getting ready to start the last short intensive round, which I believe is 12 weeks. So the end of February... Or the beginning of March, she'll be going on maintenance chemo, which la after she enters that, she'll be on it for two more years. Mm -hmm. um, so probably about 26 months, 27 months left of chemotherapy. And, um, and, and can you describe for us some of the um, side effects that she's been experiencing? Yeah, Michaela, luckily, we don't experience a whole lot of side effects. But she obviously suffers hair loss, and she's had some skin rashes from the toxicity of some of the drugs. And her the the chemotherapy drugs have taken a toll on her liver, and that is apparent now, just through labs and things like that. Um, she's had minor bouts with nausea and. and she had some pain in the beginning, like some leg pain. But most of all, we don't have a whole lot of symptoms. She's a very happy girl most every day. Well, that's a, that's a relief to hear. And 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 you feel that the cannabis um, treatment that you have her on is, has been effectively treating her side effects? Great. Yeah, it works awesome. We don't have to use pain relievers. No Tylenol or Benadryl, and she nice. doesn't take her anti-nauseas unless, unless she starts puking and we can't stop mm -hmm. it with a ginger candy, mm -hmm. which is very rarely. So she just really doesn't take a lot of medication, which shows that it's Right. right. And and for, for our listeners who haven't maybe followed this story as close, uh, Michaela takes cannabis in an oil capsule, right? Like a, a coconut oil or something like that inside a capsule? And also yeah. the tea, she, correct? She takes the oil in the capsule, and she takes coconut oil prior to taking the oil. It transports the oil through the – it metabolizes the oil better. She also juices with the raw cannabis juicing, and she eats medibles. And we have also have tinctures, things like that. So she gets cannabis in various different ways. Now, Erin, how is the how is her um, uh, pediatrician and uh, just she sees a pediatrician oncologist, correct? Yeah. And how how has um, uh, that doctor's uh, attitude been towards you treating her with cannabis? Have they been cooperative? Have they been resistant? We have a doctor in the very beginning who was very resistant to cannabis therapy. Uh, we have a new oncologist now who is. He accepted of it. He feels that Michaela's doing awesome. He's 100% happy with her health and how she's doing and how she handles chemotherapy. So um, I don't think he necessarily supports 100%, but I feel that he's happy with where Michaela's at. And, and he's told us he's happy with where Michaela's at. 
Yeah. Outside of treatment, have you guys found like our, our neighbors looking at you funny? Are you guys getting a little notoriety out of this or is it mostly just in, in certain circles that people are taking note of this story? Like, you know, the legislatures if, in our community. If a kid is with us, then people notice us. If she's not with us at the time, we aren't noticed. Yeah. We did take, we, she can't go very many places right now because her immune system is compromised. Right. We took her to Fred Myers when it was high enough to go into the public. And I had a few people recognize us and they, they, most people just love her. So they're all happy to see her. Yeah, she's she's a great little kid. So she, you're a good poster child there for this issue, Michaela, because you're so smart and so well behaved, and you've got great parents. You guys, you guys are a, a good. I, I hate to you know say that the spotlight's on you, but it is. You right. know what I mean? You guys are a yeah. good case for this. That that. I think that you guys are well informed about what's going on, including Michaela. Well, you know? and I think that you get the responsibility of res of, of uh, representing, you know, and, and unfortunately, yeah. that's a burden that has been placed on your shoulders. Um, you know, I'm sure you're well uh, well aware of uh, Casey. Um, was that right? Cashy. 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 I'm sorry, Casey. Cashy. 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 I don't know where I say that. Um, yeah. And and how you know what that family went through and you know we're hoping for a different outcome here but i mean the responsibility that comes along with that can be a burden in itself as well and i think you've handled it really well um i know that you and uh, you have, must be ex exhausted most days because after a while you feel like you're saying the same thing over and over again <laughs> <laughs> i actually enjoy it it Something that I feel I my mission and purpose in life is to spread the word, help people who are ill, alive, suffer from health problems. My my entire life since I was 17 years old, and cannabis one thing has helped me, and it has saved my daughter. I've watched it save many other family members. And I feel that this is my purpose, and I really enjoy speaking to pretty much anyone about it. It's a great platform. I mean, it really is. You've got people's attention because they, they're so concerned about, you know, drugs and children uh, well, in general. And, when, and and so they're willing to listen. And then you guys have great information to put there right where they need it. So well, I think here's a perfect example. There's a lot of people who say, oh, there's minors in the program. There's minors in the program. And then this is a good example of why there are minors in the program because minors do get very ill. They get life-threatening um, illnesses and they have just as much right. And and um, it's the it's the least cruel um, treatment that we can offer a child. And and so um, I think we're going to need to be wrapping this segment up, but I want to thank you both for coming on. And I just wanted to for ask sure. really quick, did I, do okay. I recall correctly, Erin, that you guys were planning on coming to see us at the legislature, you know, talking to the representatives as they're addressing this issue as well? Yes, I plan on doing that for sure. Like, I don't want to see she could pay one thing Absolutely. Thank you so much. We'll make sure to include that on our blog too. And I'll be in touch with you, Aaron, later to talk about that website with you. Um, yeah, we'll definitely discuss the Salem legislator and Representative Andy Wilson and just talking to him about children and cannabis and how it benefits. Very good. Um, Excellent. I'm looking forward to that because, like I said, I think you guys have a lot of good information to bring bring to the table, and, and it needs to be heard. So thank you so much for being out there, and thank you for coming on our show. Thank you so much. It's a great show. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, Michaela. Bye. You're listening to A Different View. We're going to take a quick break. Um, just a rehash real quick. Uh, you can check out our blog at a different view us. You can check us out on Twitter at ADV 420 and on Facebook, a different view 420. And definitely check out, um, brave Michaela, brave Michaela.com. And we'll put that on our blog. So we'll be right back. If you're not resting by my side, you heard what I say. And still you're not one. Give me no answer. Why are you playing with my mind? Talking on your love, darling. I'm talking on your love. Talking on your love. 
Everybody else done thing that me got a Said me got no luck, but y'all me got a lot of. So when you come around, cool me down No baby, can I want you cool me down? Talking on your love, darling I'm talking on your love Talking on your love, darling I'm talking on your love back with a different view hey everybody how are you i hope you're uh, thanks for staying with us blah 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 <laughs> so um if, I'm, out of, I'm out of practice it's been a couple of weeks so we were just talking with aaron mm-hmm. at purchase and brave michaela you know with the patient and the other end of that is is the the grower provider end and so right. I, I wanted to jump over to montana for a minute because montana has been going through a lot of turmoil in the last year mm-hmm. year and a half maybe a little longer and um, one great example of the fallout, you know, from that <coughs> situation is the Montana Cannabis Collective was raided. I want to say it was last year in March, but my date might be wrong on that. It, it's been a little over a year. And um, the four people who were, <coughs> excuse me, charged in connection with that was Chris Williams, mm-hmm. who um, is a father of a teenage boy and was, I guess, more or less the primary person responsible for the Montana, Montana Cannabis Collective. Um, and, and then Chris Lindsay, who worked closely with him, and Richard Floor, and then finally Tom Dober. And all four of them were charged with more or less the same crimes. Mm-hmm. I mean, slight variations, but all for running the Montana Cannabis Collective and providing medicine to medical marijuana patients under Montana law. Right. <laughs> they were raided by the DEA, and all face different situations as as a result. Um, for instance, Tom Dober was offered a plea arrangement, I believe, for testifying against Chris Lindsay, and he was given five years probation, which for, for him, he was a, a legal professional, so that, that ruins his life just as much as going to, you know what I'm saying? I mean, right. like, they, they, they pretty much destroyed, you know, him and that, but he gets five years probation. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, over the last few months, for anybody that's been following Chris Williams' case, he was facing something like 92 years in prison. And that wasn't for the ridiculous. marijuana. That was for uh, firearms charges right. related to conspiracy charges, which made him responsible for other people's guns with mandatory minimum sentencing laws. Uh, when he was found guilty, even the, the prosecutors balked at what they were looking at for mandatory minimum. So they offered him an after sentence, or I mean, after trial or post-conviction, I guess what they call it, post-conviction plea arrangement, mm, because okay. they couldn't even see locking this man up for 100 years, you know? That's just ridiculous. Um, he's not yet sentenced, but he's looking at going in February. Early mm-hmm. February is his, his scheduled date. But the most recent plea arrangement that they're offering him is is five years in prison. Right, five which, years. Which is intended for him to be home by the time his child is a young adult. Um, <laughs> and... and Mind you, he recently took his child out of school and homeschooled him into being a college student as a minor, like 16 or 17 years old, the kids in college, you know. I I mean, so this is like a a bright, intelligent, you know, well-formed family even, and they're they're tearing apart, you know, to send him to to prison for five years um, under mandatory minimum. 
the part that really disturbs me about that plea arrangement is it goes from, you know, the 92 to five years Mm -hmm. based on him saying that he will not appeal it. And I have huge issues with that. Um, that he's not going to pe- appeal. That he won't appeal the decision. That the five years will be the five years, and that that's mm-hmm. that he's not going to continue the court case. Well, can he appeal it though? I mean, well, well, he could. But if could it he was... afford it though? That's the other thing too. Is well, that's that... a whole other discussion. But but taking away that right to appeal mm-hmm. is in or to to cut eighty seven years off his sentence. I mean, come well, on, it's life. I don't or... know. I don't know. I I mean, I guess you know, there's probably a lot more that goes into that decision than just the eighty five years, the ninety five years. I I think. There's probably other stuff that goes into those decisions. And there's you, a you lot of I, factors. Right, but, right. But one of the factors that's not going into that is how is that going to affect his son? The, the, you know, one mm-hmm. of the factors that's not going into that is, is... Oh, I would think that he did include that factor. No, like, he did. The yeah. court didn't, I said. Well, sure, sure. Um, and, and and then he had a home worth, I want to say it was 288000 I believe that was his home that, they, mm-hmm. that he was required to forfeit or right. whatever. Um, I think that that was being negotiated last I heard. So I think he's trying to keep that, but I don't think he's going to get to. I don't know. It's just, it's it's amazing to me, you know, how that all works out. But then the other two fellows involved in, in the same thing, mm-hmm. um, Chris Lindsay was just sentenced last Friday, if I recall correctly. It was just a few days ago. And, and he was sentenced to five years probation. Um, and then Richard Floor is the most tragic so, of them. Chris, Chris Lindsay, what was his crime? Uh, the same. It was. Same. It was all for running the Montana Cannabis Club. They, oh, okay. they all work together. These, okay. these, they were four people. I mean, again, you could assign each of them, I suppose, different positions in the business, but they were all responsible for the mm-hmm. same business, right? Um, and 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 all legal under state law. I mean, let's be clear that this was legal in the state of Montana. It was the DEA that was pressing Kidding. the charges. So, which makes me wonder. Which makes me wonder and be concerned that when. Um, Washington finally does have their dispensaries. Is the DEA going to come in? See, and and so this is true of all marijuana charges, and this is just me saying this, and I've not been on the the, the chopping block, so to speak, you know, mm-hmm. to have to, to do this. So I understand that it's easier said than done by far. But realistically, our, our laws are um, ridiculous. Our drug war is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. The things that are required under this drug war – at 92 years because you had some pot near a gun? I mean, really, is that... Yeah. And we're talking a Second Amendment constitutional right and a legal state law. You know, this this isn't even a crime, at least right. in the, the most well-understood terminology. Well, and I think that's... But the, the ultimate fallout here is that nobody's fighting back against the pressure. Mm-hmm. And, and it's understandable. I mean, when Chris is looking at never seeing his child again on the other side of the bars, you know, right, right. Which, until his child has had great grandkids, a like, hundred years, that's a long time. Right. Um, that, that's a huge weight. That's, well, you that's know, a I lot think of power. It's also a lot of waste. I, I mean, to put somebody through all of this for something, it just seems like a huge waste of time. And there's better things for the DEA to do. Well, and that's really clearly illustrated with Chris Williams' case. They're like, look, quit wasting our money and we'll only give you five years. Five mm-hmm. years, no big deal. You'll still see your kid, you know, before he's had your grandbabies or at least before they're too old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but the the fact is, is if the prosecutor even feels like the the requirements under the law are beyond just mm-hmm. then, then we should change it and, right. and 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 clearly that's where we are you know i mean it if more people were getting those 92 year sentences the drug war would have ended mm-hmm. already oh, it's, yeah. it's the fact that we have these strict laws that we don't take seriously we don't enforce and then we wonder why nobody follows the law right <laughs> you know at least federally speaking mm-hmm. um if if we actually enforce the full force of the law it would cost us so much that it would be completely unmaintainable it's the fact that we use it as leverage to plead people out and take their homes, homes their children, property, their property. Yeah, yeah. right? Which seems like it, it seems like there, there's a lot more work and waste that goes into just grabbing those little pieces, just to push, you know, just to make, you know, pressure people out of cannabis. And, well, and, and it doesn't work. I was going to say um, one of the things, and, and I printed off this article at home, but I also. Um, left it with our with our timings for tonight sorry uh, there was an article about chris lindsay though that i recently was reading and I'll, i will try to include this on our blog tonight mm-hmm. as well um it basically talked about how he was going to continue to work in the cannabis advocacy even you know while he's on probation which is great you know you want to see these activists continue right but, is it but, but he's not allowed probation? no he's not allowed to use marijuana you know he's on probation there's i think some seizures involved you know with him too 
But there's no jail time. You know, there's no taxpayer loss there. There was only loss to him, which is how you want it if it's a criminal thing. Mm -hmm. But that means that society is not feeling the effects. Uh, His family is taking those losses. Right. Those it's going back on society because now you have the foster care system, the welfare system, you know, right. Right. All of these things. But it's not felt directly enough for people to make that correlation. Right. And and so it continues (laughs) and it's ridiculous. Well, and uh, now you had mentioned before that he was an attorney that was working. Um, Tom Tom Dober, I believe, was the uh, attorney. Well, and it, it, well, in this article it says he's also an attorney and president of the Montana Cannabis Industry. Chris so, is Chris Lindsay, yeah. Oh, Chris Lindsay. Okay, yeah. I don't know a lot about Chris, Chris Lindsay. I just know that he's one of the four. Um, so I didn't know that. That. Well, not only that, but he has to also undergo uh, regular drug testing. Mm-hmm. He has to complete two twelve hundred hours of community service, which is. A lot. If uh, I don't know if he if he was disbarred or not, but I would imagine that's probably going to be something else he'll have to tackle later on. Um, and then um, what was the other one? Two hundred hours. And then oh, he had to stay away from firearms and forfeit uh, two hundred and eighty-eight thousand in bank accounts held under the name of Montana Caregivers. So basically, any income that they had made, um, you know, they had to that, right. that they confiscated. So. I would say there's a little bit of a cost there <laughs> that they that they made off with. It's, it's no, that's what I'm saying. The cost was all to Chris Lindsay, which is which is justified if you're saying this is a criminal who shouldn't profit from his crimes. Right. But we're talking about somebody who was operating under state law for the benefit of other patients, mm-hmm. and and that perspective gets lost in the criminal justice perspective. Well, and and this article goes on to say lobbyist uh, Thomas Dalbert. Another partner in the uh, Montana Cannabis Collective uh, was sentenced to probation. Mm-hmm. Uh, a partner, Richard Florer, uh, he died in federal custody. Now, he was sentenced to five years prison, just like mm-hmm. Chris Williams is looking at. But he died in custody. Yes, which I think almost, is almost immediately. He hadn't even served but like two, like a month and a half to two months. It was They were they were waiting to transfer him. He wasn't actually in prison yet. He was like in the, Do the you know step between. what the cause was around that? He had medical complications already. Oh. And, so and, and required specific him. care. And, and it was all known so, before he was sent to jail that this care was required. But so this sounds an awful lot like the Washington story, the young, the 22-year-old that died in the Sonoma um, uh, County uh, Jail. Yeah, yeah. And his name was Michael S- Safradi, I believe is Safrati. how you... Safradi. I'm not sure how to some, pronounce it. But something yeah. like that. Yeah. S-F- S-A-F-F-R-O-T-I, I believe. Um, and, and he similarly, you know, went to jail with a health concern. He was allergic to um, milk. Right, if, milk if I products, recall. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and he was fed oatmeal with milk in it, even though it was noted that, that he had this, you know, allergy. And well, so, they'd had a big thick file on this young man because this is not the first time that he'd had, um, he, you know, had been through the jail system or and or the penal system, I should say, the jail system. <laughs> but he was only sentenced for a very short time. I want to say it was thirty days. I don't recall right. exactly. Right, and, he, but and, it was and a this short was a, he, and here's the other thing too: is he voluntarily turned himself in because he was trying to. My understanding is that he had um, a prior um, a, a case against him that he was going to some trial dates and he'd missed one, and so they'd put out a bench warrant for him, and that's why. And he turned himself in. Right. So here's a 22-year-old man trying to do the right thing, trying to go through this difficult penal system or or justice system, turns himself in um, for um, uh, the 30 days the, that he must spend whatever, in jail. Whatever, right, right. Right. And they're already aware that he has an allergy. They know this. Right. And... and- and then from, I mean, the, the stories are, are rather brief all around, obviously, you know, mm-hmm. with the death of somebody on their hands, it's it's hard to get a lot of information. But but the short answer being that, that it sounds as though nobody took his concerns seriously as he was suffering, you know. Well, and that, that's true of a lot of criminals. We find this in jail that... that their health concerns are. My aren't taken I issue, seriously. Jennifer, is is that, yeah, while that's true, here's somebody who. Who was, who was dealing with a marijuana offense, which we all can agree shouldn't be there. And he got a death sentence. Yeah. Ultimately, that's what it That's what it was. It ended up being a death sentence. Uh, we have a lot, I think, to kind of rant on, on this aspect. And so we're going to probably take a quick break, and then we'll come back and wrap up with, okay. with a little bit more about... Just ranting? Yeah, a little, a little bit of ranting about, about the realities of the criminal justice system. <laughs> uh, you're listening to A Different View. We'll, we'll be right, right back. back. Hello, my old friend, good to see you again. It's 
been a while since I last felt your tingle. You make movies more fun and just laying in the sun, even singing a silly stone or jingle. Well, you're my life, you're my hope. You're my inspiration, an old oak. You saved me when I was a goner. You bring joy to the soul. No. No. <laughs> ah, thank you. Holland, is it real? Don't tease me. We just want to make sure if it's real, really, is all we're trying to tell. Oh, it's real. And for those of you who are wondering if I'm high right now, I am not. That is not nearly enough to get me high. <laughs> Let's focus our discussion first on marijuana. Okay. Marijuana has a very distinct smell. Okay. I'm going to pass around just a little tiny bit and I want you all to take a smell so you know when someone is smoking marijuana near you. And now we're back with a different view. Hey, thanks for sticking with us. This is the last segment of the day, of the night. Of the night. Of the night. <laughs> <laughs> so you and I, um, you had brought up the article to me, you know, in this mm -hmm. last week about uh, Michael Safradi. I hope I'm saying his name right, um, about him dying in jail, you know, as the, as we were just discussing, as a mm -hmm. result of the allergy to milk. And, and I mentioned... Richard Flora to you in my email back to you, which I don't know if you've read it, so we'll just talk about it. Uh, Richard Flora had passed away, you know, as we were just saying, right, you know, right. right into his five-year sentence, and it was the same thing, lack of proper medical care. And and a lot of people in our community get very worked up about this because it is ridiculous for somebody to be virtually sentenced to death for a petty crime, right. marijuana specifically, but petty crime. I mean, we're talking about something that we think he should have only gone to jail for 30 days for or prison for mm -hmm. five years for. Right. Five years and dying are, are extremes. You know, those those are not, it's not even close. Um, the reality is, is that there are a lot of different health related issues that, that go completely unaddressed in, in our prison system. So when we talk about putting somebody into jail or prison, it's not as simple as just this is your punishment, you do it, you're done, over. There's there's complications here. Mm -hmm. There's there's healthcare needs that can't be met, you know, there's psychological problems that can't be treated. And and despite our best efforts at providing all of this, we can't provide it for the average citizen and a lot of the public is very resistant to providing it for Criminals, you right. know, the bad guys. Right. They're undeserving. If, well, if somebody who's poor and sick is undeserving, I mean, a criminal, you know, they certainly don't deserve any of our sympathy, empathy, or treatment. And, and so it's a really hard topic to get addressed because a lot of people want to be that quote unquote tough on crime and, mm -hmm. and make sure that the, the laws are being enforced to the full extent that they can be. So, so that other people are deterred. A lot of times you'll hear the, the leaders throughout government talking about how our laws are a deterrent simply by having this law with this punishment right. that people won't break the law because now it's, it's defined. Well, and I think that we've successfully had, uh, successfully successfully have um, challenged that by, you know, education and cigarettes. Are, sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> cigarettes are is a good example of that, of cigarettes, you know, fewer people are smoking cigarettes. The, the rates of cigarette um, among teenagers has gone down. And, and that's because of social pressure, 
not an education, not necessarily because we've decided to lock up minors or lock up people who give. Right. It's minors. been done through education right. and some propaganda, let's let's be well, clear. But, sure. but education being the, the big crucial element, you know, reaching out to people and, and teaching them something different than what they currently know. Mm -hmm. And and with criminal justice, I mean, that's the same thing. You have to, to consider is putting all of these different categories of people into a uh, prison, a jail, uh, whatever, you know, some sort of lockdown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it is it actually benefiting us or are we creating more problems? And not just in in the future, you know, because there are many, 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 many studies that show that, you know, being put in a room with a bunch of other criminals, you're probably coming out the other end. Not pick up a couple quite, of tips. Yeah. Yeah. With, with some new connections and some new... <laughs> new Anyway. I don't know anybody who hasn't gone through that system. I don't, not, I don't know a lot of people who haven't gone through the penal system, but uh, but anyone that I have met who's gone through it, even if it's been a short time, if they've spent any time, they've come out on the other end of that a completely different person. I mean, psychologically, emotionally, and, and physically, you know, some people, it's the, it, it is helpful for some people respond well to that sort of negative reinforcement. So it's military service, but but some people don't respond well to that and and then you've put them in there with a bunch of other people to give them new ideas of what to try next i mean it seems like a doom system from it seems time. like a great place to network if you're a criminal like you know brainstorm what did we do wrong you, you know More what i mean or less, that oh. really does happen but but then but then we take the other side of that it's not just what they're getting negative out of there that they're bringing back into society mm -hmm. it's the people that are going in and not coming back out and right. the people that are left behind when they go in like we were just talking about chris williams his right. son Right. I mean, with with his short sentence that that he's looking at now and short being very relative here, he's looking at five years. His son is a teenager right now. Five years is a good chunk of his life. Right. I mean, you're talking, you know, even if he's, you know, say 15, he'll be 20. That's a quarter of his to life. Me, it's, you know, yeah. To me, yeah, I, I'm, you know, th there, are, there are family members that are going to be affected. But I also think about what a waste to society that is. Y you know, what a waste economically, because we just can't afford to lock up everybody. We can't keep making laws that, that put people in jail. If our laws don't deter people in the first place, they're not working. And so far, jail ain't working. Right. Uh, uh, you know, there's, there's, that's not working. And, and, you know, I think that other countries have done a better job of, of, of rehabilitating, um, y you know, people. But, at the same time, you know, the, are these individuals, should they be rehabilitated, assimilated, you know? Well, and I, I was going to say, this is the really cold, harsh way to look at it. But but putting all emotional arguments aside for a minute, if these people are really that horrible, should they be going back out into society? I mean, is that our problem that we keep sending them back out? We should have that discussion, too. I think what well, we're going to find is that we're locking way too many people up. Well, and I think but let's that, consider the broad spectrum well, here. Well, and I think that, you know, you and I were talking about how long these, you know, could have been facing 8,500 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that appropriate? I mean, I think that's where the argument is. Is like that's I that's think like we're not... okay. So your kid gets into trouble. He's got his hand in the cookie jar. You're grounded till you're ten. Or, or like are we going to cut know? his hand off? Are we going <laughs> to cut his hand off and destroy his life? I mean, I, I think that the I think that's the thing that we. It's should so be ridiculous at this. as to be not only ineffective right. but counterproductive. Exactly, but. The fact that he got five years as opposed to the 95, and, and the people were like, even the prosecutors were going, wait a minute, that's a little bit unreasonable, even by our standards. And, you know, they like to win a case. Um, but it, it seems to me that even, even people who um, may not agree with marijuana are starting to feel like the, the penalties far, far exceed you know, the damage done to society to put somebody, to penalize somebody to that extent. That's the biggest child secret molester of rapist prohibition, that. though, right there. That's the biggest secret of prohibition because we all know it's no big deal. deal. We all know it. We know that that nobody loses their entire, nobody's life in prison. What, what did, uh, so then why can't what, what we get the, our legislators, you know, our presidents, our, our leaders no, together? No, no, no. Josh Marquis uh, was a, a Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm, that guy debating. I was looking for the word debating back and forth with Paul Stanford during the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. Yeah, that's what you called it? all throughout the state, and and repeatedly he kept saying that nobody was in jail, nobody was in prison, nobody's you know nobody goes away for this. You know it's a ticket, and he was very adamant about this. This uh -huh. is the prosecutor. This is the man in charge of enforcing right. the law. Now that's not what our law books say. Right now, if that is what's happening, then even our lawmen aren't taking our law seriously. 
Or well, he's admitting. <laughs> he's admitting that oh, it's not that big of a deal. So if it's not that big of a deal, why do we have the law on the books? Well, if we're not prosecuting or using that law, then why do we have it on the books? Let's just get rid but, of it. But the problem is, is that, and this is, I, I don't have this shirt on today, but my no plea for me shirt. That's why I love that one so much because the reality is, is that because so many plea, so many people plea out of these charges. It's just it's it's taken for granted that you're going to plea down a growing charge to a possession charge, mm -hmm. get a probation term, you're on drug treatment, and then it's gone. It's over. Maybe you lost your bank account or your car or something in the process, depending upon the scenario. Mm -hmm. And and so while it's it's devastating to you, it's something that you can recover from. It's no big deal. You didn't go to jail. Mm -hmm. That that's how our society looks at it. And and the reality is is that that's what was pled down to mm -hmm. in exchange for not arguing it. And and that is ridiculous because on the one hand, what if I didn't do it? Now I'm facing like this 92 year sentence or a five year sentence and there, there's no freedom included in that range if mm -hmm. you didn't notice. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like you're guilty or you're guilty. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's the, the paradigm that we put marijuana users are in our criminal justice system. And then once they're in the system, we can't afford to take care of them or give any care to personal needs you know again we look at richard floor we look at michael safferty all of mm -hmm. these different people that have died over petty crimes that are no big deal, deal. that nobody goes to jail for right, they don't right. get to come nobody. out of jail yeah I don't, <laughs> nobody goes to jail for i don't know about that and, um, and i don't think and, and and this is the same kind of thing that the prohibitionists like to say about you know well if one person suffers because of that drug then we need to fight many, it yeah if one person is dying in jail and, and it's not one. I mean, I just named two that have died in less than a, you know, like. Oh, one. we could rattle off all and, kinds of And there's a whole of bunch names. of them. Right. Bunch, yeah. But, but I mean, even if it is just a handful of people, that's okay. It, no, it's I'd not. love to see that. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to see that from the women out there. If you're a quilter, I'm not. Um, but you know, um, a quilt of everybody's name, name that, that has, has died, died from prison. the yeah, who's died from prison or the war on drugs, drugs because period. there's that that veteran right. in in Arizona. I keep Jose. Jose. What was his last name? Garena, there you go. And he was shot 67 times by the cops I, I think that in his would, own home. I, I would like to see that done, is like a quilt. I think that's a great visual. Just just names. Because we did that with the AIDS blanket. We did that with all kinds of other mm -hmm. things. Cancer, so on and so forth. You know, the, the, the so we'll have to put that out on our blog as well. Yeah. Seeking quilters. Because yeah. <laughs> I think that, that's a great idea. And I, and I, I think that brings the reality home. Just to see that. And, and you know, I know there's this big push to bring, um, to do have a, a, a protest um, on, um, it, I wasn't, isn't there a, pro a protest going on? Or there's a plan to have a protest in Washington, D.C.? There's always a plan to have a protest in Washington, D.C. Well, Which one would well, you mean? <laughs> well, no, I know that there's we'll, like some We'll look into it and get yeah. back to it on a future show then. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, I think that would be something to parade out there and say, look, these are the people who are dying from your stupid war. And I mean, and I don't know if there's enough space for the people in Mexico. I was going to say, I don't know how big that quilt is going to be, but I think it's going to be an interesting experiment to find out. There we go. It, it really is. Um, so we need to wrap up this week's show. Welcome back to 2013, and thank you for listening to A Different View. <laughs> uh, we're live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. We'll be back uh, next week arguing again. Arguing again, <laughs> probably. And then we're on Twitter at ADV420, Facebook, A Different View 420, and our website is up, all new and yeah, improved. Shiny. Uh, a different view dot us. That's right. Check us out. If you have something to say, please let us know. We're always here to listen to your comments and concerns. And new discussion forums at That's that right. website. So join in the conversation. And if you missed uh, the interview with uh, Aaron Purchase and Brave Michaela, you can catch the replay of A Different View tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific. Check 420radio.org slash schedule for the entire replay schedule. And thank you to 420 or 420radio.org for hosting us. It's a long, long road. See you guys next week. It's a long, long, long road. It's a long, it's a long road.